Hello, various Fimpossible creations and in this video I will describe different parameters of Spine Animator package, give some examples to make you able use full potential of this component. So let's get started. I will use here free model of Golden Tiger for example. Let's add Spine Animator to the object. If you would need quick tip, you can enter on anything inside inspector window to display tooltip, but tooltips aren't shown in play mode. So after adding spine animator, we don't see much because we have to define spine chain before doing anything more. Spine chain is simply group of game objects and when we have skinned model, bones of this model are represented by the game objects. When I will say segment, I mean bone slash game object. We have to define first bone and last bone of the chain. For animating animal spine, we should put here pelvis bone, which children are leg bones and rest of the spine. It's standard structure of skeleton for animals. So start bone is set to pelvis bone. At the end of the spine chain, we can put chest, neck, head, depending of what we want to achieve. In Nevest version of Spine Animator, algorithm is trying to select right bones by names, but not everyone is naming bones, so every time check if correct ones were assigned. L button will reveal last bone in parented chain, just to help you go through hierarchy if automatic search for right bones will not be able to find right ones. When we have set it up first and last bone, hit get to create spine chain. Now you can reveal spine transforms. And if you would need, you can remove selective bones from the chain. Later in the video, I will tell when it can be helpful. Now in scene view, you can tell by gizmos where are your bones and which bone is interpreted as head. If it's in the wrong place, untoggle last bone leading. Thanks to this toggle we can define if we want to use reverse parent follow motion. With blends to original parameter, you can define how much motion of component you want to use on model. Also, you can use this to smoothly disable component. If your model isn't animated at all, you should untoggle connect with animator. It will be highlighted if spine animator will not detect any Unity animator attached to the model. But when you have animated model and you toggle this on, whole model animation will be cooperating with spine animator motion. Now let's talk about animation options. Positions and rotation smoother should be set higher if you need very smooth motion for the spine. You can need this probably very rare, but in some cases it can be helpful. With angle limit you will define how each segment can rotate in reference to its previous segment. It's pretty important parameter for customizing right spine behavior. Limit smoother will make hitting angle limit range more smooth, which can be really helpful. See it on the example. Straighten speed is progressively making spine go to straight pose, but doing it only when creature is moving. This can help make animation look more realistic in different situations. Go back speed will make spine go to straight pose progressively every time, no matter if creature is moving or not. It can be helpful when setting tail with spine animator. Last parameter is slittery. When it's going down, each segment is reacting more stiff. If your model moves too much like snake, you can go with this parameter down. Also, to reduce the snaky effect, you can use spine transforms list and remove some bones from the chain to make it less dense. I was talking about this list at the beginning of the video. And now tuning tab. Chain method is selecting algorithm to make spine chain react correctly. In future versions, this parameter probably will disappear because algorithm universal works just right on everything but need to be tested a bit more. Positions and rotations not animated, in some exception cases, can be really important. So, when your model have position keyframes, which is very rare, 
you can notice that there is something wrong with the animation. With these toggles we allow components to use keyframe animation motion. So keyframes made in modeling software. Cause when there is no keyframes and we want to animate bones through code, it causes issues like this. Some models can have the same problem with rotation keyframes. So let's find which bone is breaking component. It seems it's the same as in positions elements array. Then it will work. Start after T pose will allow components to create its reference spine pose from first frame of animation after start. It's helpful when your model have very different pose at T pose than the default animations. Like quadruped staying on two legs in T-Pose, but in game it works only on four legs. Main pivot offset can really help spine motion create right movement for head bone. You should tweak it so pivot center is near to the leading bone position. But remember to change this control to not be center, so true pivot will be shown. Advanced options provide special parameters which can help when there's going on more tricky stuff. Physical update is making algorithm cooperate with Unity's animator when it have enabled animate physics update mode. Save delta time is making spine motion work better when FPS are very low. Q to last update will make this spine animator executed after once with this toggle disabled. It's helpful when you're setting spine and also tail. Then we want spine to move first then tail to follow spine motion. It's just right execution order. There I will not explain anchoring, because it's a bit complicated right now. In future versions it will be simplified. Segments pivot offset is offsetting rotation pivot of each segment of spine. It can be helpful in some cases when your spine is not moving like you want it. For example, in this model I put it bones in the wrong places, but I can fix it with this parameter. For next parameter, let me enable debug view. Distances multiplayer will make reference pose distance between bones shorter. It can be used for variant uses for advanced users, for example setting spine animator for humanoid spine if considered. There we have some optional correction parameters, where we can offset bones if in some case would be needed. And the last tab will be collision section. There is gravity parameter which works even when collisions are disabled. Now we can enable collisions by toggling this. Then we have to define scale of colliders we want to use on the spine. We can tweak their positioning with rest of the parameters. In future there probably will be capsule collision option instead of just spheres. Now to make it collide with something we need to define colliders to collide with. We can't collide with all world colliders because it would cost too much and give poor detailed info about collisions in some cases. So we put here our colliders and hit play. And it works. But let's say we want creature like this collide with ground. Then we have to use gravity. But we don't have platform in colliders array, so we do it now. And now our chain is correctly falling on ground, instead of hanging in air. And the last toggle, detailed collision. So in this situation, there is box on which creature is standing, and sphere collider. Without detailed collisions, algorithm is trying to use colliders alternately, which is causing jittering. When we toggle detailed collisions, then algorithm is allowed to detect collisions with multiple colliders in the same time. So that's everything for this video. If you have some questions, please write them in the comment section below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video or learned something. Subscribe for more. Hit the bell for notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching.
and see you next time. Bye-bye.